who is listening. Mm. It's just like uh, I didn't really get in the import of what I'm trying to say. I've been just myself I did talk to. And sometimes I must tell you, it's a lonely, a lonely path to walk. <laughs> and uh, now I'm beginning to appreciate how even the few good people amongst us are losing their goodness <laughs> because uh, survival has become a battle in this jungle. <laughs> it's just about. Survival. Enraged with the impunity and with all the nyama nyama that is going on in the system. Mm. Yeah, but that won't stop me from coming to last year when I mean started from last year when you know you started Abu do and then mm. the most prominent thing you did that time was resume and resign. Exactly. And then yet nobody is saying anything about it. And the latest one now. Uh, young people are going around and shouting, articulate, articulate. I don't know what. They articulate it, <laughs> you know, and uh, it, it seems to be well, you know, people are saying things like the lesser devil. Wow, let's use lesser evil. evil yeah. And I'm asking, evil, no, be evil. Uh -huh. What is Less about yes, evil. evil, yes, you know. So, I, yeah, as well, I saw your comment on that. Sometimes I get confused myself, yeah, yeah. Mm. but you, you can't afford to be confused because I is the same way too. But you know that no, it's also my confusion is not. About giving up, yeah. I'm, I'm like, oh yeah, what what other strategy does one need to employ to get this message across? Yeah, for young people to know that this really is their future we're talking about. So when I met you last year, we were discussing, and I had not even had any intention or even remotely been thinking about. Yes. Because at the end of the day, the thing just fell apart. Yes. And it didn't work. Yes. So what went wrong, in your own opinion? What yes. went wrong with that? <coughs> you know? Because you were among the first two few people that I had spoken to yes. about that. And you were... Actually, I was the one who came to you. 
asking you to host all the young presidential aspirants in your mm-hmm. house. Mm-hmm. But you did ask me if I knew who they were, that you only knew two people, myself three. and yeah, me three. And I was one who gave you Feladro to his number that night. And you called him and said, yeah, we're set to go. But it was also right here in your living room. You know, you remember sitting right across from us. I think about 10 of them that night, where someone said that, oh, we have spoken to the elders. I don't know if you caught that particular conversation, mm-hmm. right? And they, they are looking for someone acceptable to them. And I rose up on that corner and said, I don't say, uh, I would never be part of a committee of young people who are pre- going to present an acceptable candidate to the elders. And I don't know if you caught that, you know. But before we came to your house, we had another meeting where we advised that instead of the monthly crowd, we should all go to our parties, become candidates first, yes. and before we and start to, mm-hmm. so that we can eliminate, you know, we can do an eliminated series, I mean, eliminated series, because in all honesty, even at your house, we know that there were only made three major candidates when we reached your house who could represent the youth. But we had others who were even shouting and talking more than others, who we knew even got into the race the day before. You said it, that I've never seen this many people. I didn't know that this many young people are running for office. But as you later found out, and uh, you issued a statement, I think your group issued a statement that even the two people that went ahead from the two that I chose, you know, uh, to slog it out, you didn't think the operation was fair. Mm. Yes, mm-hmm. um, but probably because I was clamoring, I'd, I'd seen that in advance that it was set up to bring about that uh, particular pre- that predetermined result, and that's why I pulled out. And when I pulled out, I told you uh, that I couldn't be, I won't say pull out because I said I couldn't be part of this because it looks like uh, people are not going to, you know, the, the, what we wanted was for a candidate can represent them, and we can stand out there and go campaign for the person. If it is not one of us, then I want to be it. And I was uh, looking forward to that. But it was very quickly clear that it wasn't going to get us to where I wanted. If we presented a candidate that was only acceptable to the elders, we would have still been doing the articulating thing now. So what, what would you prescribe in moving forward now? I, I think it's clear that uh, already even the processes in the parties have eliminated a lot of yeah. Uh, the people you saw. I went back to Feladro to met him and we went to see Professor Wale you know, so that we can start getting elders who have conscience on our side. When I mean on our side, on, on the side of a young people, people, candidates. And <clears throat> at that point, we can look at other parameters. Who has the strongest conviction, who has the most mass following, who young people can trust. There's no question about it that young people want a presidential aspirant that can lead them to El Dorado, you know. And I believe that that can exist within the few number of younger aspirants we have now. But it's not enough to just say, okay, we're going to into another election. Let's get all the elders first who believe that there's a need for generational shift to be on our side. Shoyika has promised that he'll do that. I have no doubt that you believe in that by way of uh, your position on the articulated nonsense that is going on. Uh, as I said the other day, article is not about to save that. But I think if you see the people around him, you know that they are coming back with vengeance. You see, even his uh, campaign uh, coordinator, uh, Director General Saraki. You see. I understand the yeah. dynamics, yes. but my problem yes. is this you know, individually on our own. Yes. Yeah?
We don't have the structure that they have. So I, we, I totally disagree with structure. But yes, I was closer to in my That they, do. That they, they don't have structures. If they have structures, they will not have to buy votes in Osho. If they have structures, they will not have to buy are they, votes. Are they, are they not buying votes because they are capitalizing the, after all they weaponize hunger? Of course. If, if what structures mean, Father, is that you have created you know systems in different constituencies around the country that can defend and help make people vote for you. The structure they have are the structures for bribery, corruption, intimidation, and visitation of evil on our people. That's the structure they have. It's a, it's a super structure that is so erosive and corrosive that people are just generally afraid of these structures. Most people have given up, they don't go out there. But the real structures that can make people win elections, they don't have those structures. We went around this country, we didn't see no structure, we didn't see no PDP structure. We didn't see APC organic structures. We are the ones who even went and created organic structures and places. But I agree with you. Do they have money? Absolutely. Do they have the capacity to perpetrate evil? Definitely. But do they have the backing of the people of this country to continue to be treated like this? I would say absolutely no. They don't. Do you think Anek was fair in the Kitty and the Osho election? Anek, I have always said this about Anek. Anek's job. Mm. is to help elect the person in power. That is their primary job. It takes occasional flickers of that, you know, different kind of mindset by the leadership of INEC to say, look, I want to create history for myself by doing something different. I want to be open and transparent. But if you look at within INEC itself, the structures, those of us who have been inside it or studied over years, they have a lot of dirty, rotten, you know, systems in place, personalities in place, who are beholden to the systems. I mean, who are beholden to systems. Yes. Both on the PDP side or on the APC side. There are areas where PDP controls are in there. There are areas where APC controls are in there. The other chairman might be different. But how far can he go? Maybe on election day, he take a helicopter, he can visit like five places before he gets exhausted. What happens to his men on the field who are doing all kinds of crazy things? So that is where it's important to have people now counter-right or counter-band INET. That's where we need young people because who are the people who carry ballot papers, ballot boxes, who carry a big in young people? But they have realized that technology is countering some of the outright brazen stealing of election. That's why they have not resorted to using money to buy votes, what they call see and buy. But yeah, I didn't scratch that off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that somebody like me would be fighting the fight for young people. Yeah. And they are missing in action. Yeah. And you can only find them on the social media ranting. Yeah. And when it's time to say, can we all come out? and do some kind of intervention, you don't get to see anybody. I, I, are they really ready for this change? I, I, think, I think they are ready, but there is no, there's little or no conscious education of young people. Uh, you can understand, you mentioned about the weaponization of hunger. Yeah. There has also been a weaponization of ignorance. The universities, primary schools and secondary schools were not destroyed for any reason other than to make sure that young people don't have the right kind of education that will make them become conscious of the environment, conscious of politics, conscious of their social political conditions. Uh, that's why they're destroyed. The children of the rich are not having those problems. They send them to universities yeah. where they can understand how to manage their parents' stolen wealth. They didn't send them to universities where they are going to learn how to overthrow their parents. But the ones here who are going to a secondary school, they just they just run them through the meals. So in our time when I was at the university, we had access to your likes without the without the school authorities chaperoning us. We had access to Ganefa or Femi Falan. Today they would prefer to bring a musician who is singing about Bombo on campus and they'll have people you know, the, the VC will even be there doing shaku shaku. That to bring you 
to university campus to speak because they say, well, if Charlie Boy comes here, it's going to scatter our school. <laughs> so we no longer had any, on top of that, we don't have student unions who are independent on their own, who can bring in the, kind of, the right kind of ideas that can make people be conscious. So these are places where you pick up consciousness. You pick up consciousness through literacy, and it is only through consciousness that literacy becomes education. Otherwise, being literate don't mean nothing. You can go to the university and be an idiot. Same way, you can travel abroad and have no exposure. Mm -hmm. Depending on what you're doing there, where you are, where you go there, you have been through all of this before. And I've seen it 19 years in America. Uh, I, you miss some of the people who have been to that. America longer than I am. They are so ignorant, so unexposed about even the American society. You wonder what, where have you been? Have you been living on that? So, how do we second? All of this in terms of our messaging, and, and I think that is where what we're doing is important. We should have more of your voice out there, more of the voices of people like you out there. That's why we're going around uh, people who are of older generation. I don't, I won't say old, but people who have old ideas, who have consciousness, to keep putting what you're saying out and keep ensuring that what you're saying is repeated and not the articulation of. You know uh, the articulation of retrogression that is become the things of. years ago or uh, if they knew me, met me for the first time but there's also a lot of a lot of young people who are rising up to me and say you know, but she has always said this for 30 years consistently I Brought out a lot of things in the course of this matter that people never thought were ideas that can become mainstream. Well, look at where we are today. Some of the ideas have become mainstream, and I love that. I, I I love the fact that somehow we think that people are not hearing us. I think a lot of people pretend as if they are not hearing us because it's actually difficult to move from lethargy to action. Yeah. What is lethargy? A lot of people are comfortable where they are. They are on Twitter, suddenly you want them to go and be campaign for a better Nigeria. You move them from Twitter. something more concrete. It's difficult for them. Out there who say, hey, you know, you should have kicked that ball that way. You should have kicked somebody's behind that way. And I would have been supporting a variety of uh, positions. Uh, but now that I'm running, he will have better leverage to do it. So, and that is the reason why 
even though we haven't had a single candidate, I'm still very close to so many of the candidates, and also I'm critical of some of them and their position. And let me ask you, point yeah. Black. Yes. With we we seen how money politics have come to play. Yes. We seen how Reagan has come to play. Yes. We see that sometimes I neg. It's not that. Independent. Of course, okay. I said that before. Yeah. With all of this, what chance do do the uh, young people stand? People like you. Yeah. I, what, I, what 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 I and it's, I, I made a statement of collaboration two days ago, and it's like apart from just the expectation that we're going into election, there has to be a revolutionary fervor to this. Yeah. And the revolutionary fervor is that yes, we think we're going to win, and uh, we, we're going to vote in our election, but it must be a backup plan. You know that look, we also understand that the odds are stacked against us. How do you do that? So there has to be neighborhood revolutionary guards. In terms of def defending the vote. Defending the votes. Not only defending the to, to still campaigning and make it clear that we're not accepting anything less than a free and fair election. And a free and fair election is only an election that helps you to elect a leader you want, right? Or the leader. So, and what I'm getting from all, a lot of young people is that they don't want these old people again. They might have who they want between the rest of the young people, which is fine. It's good to have that choice of diversity, but let us all come to a point where we say, these are, we are doing an election series, these are things that are acceptable, and these are things that are not acceptable. Articulated is unacceptable to me. Who had latent, you know, or disrupted, whatever they want to call him, is unacceptable to me. Let me start looking at these other young people. And of all these young people, these are the people that are acceptable to us. Look, at the end of the day, if you are not voting for. There has to be a revolutionary favor to it. There must be something that is clear. to these old people that these young people are not going to accept anything but freedom you know and freedom is not the same thing as you know cooked up election results if we have the misfortune of we have in pdp coming for pdp or apc coming back next year or they refuse to or the people in power for now refuse to give it up yeah what would be what do you think our next move should be? Oh, our work will have just started at that point. You know, I said something and I'll repeat that today. If, if you are planning for elections, and then you know, revolution happens, you're lucky. Or you do an election and it leads to a revolution, we are still lucky. And that's the way I want us to look at it. There are standards that we cannot, like you said earlier, there are things that are not going to be sustainable beyond now. There are leaders that are not going to be acceptable beyond now. It doesn't matter how they find themselves into power. Where people are just saying, look, and until you draw the line, they will figure out how to win the election. It is not, our job is not having <coughs> to win the election. Our job is to ensure that the election leads to 
something that will benefit Nigeria. And that's why we are presented ourselves. You see, they have a chance now to even accept, and this might sound a little bit crazy. They have a chance to accept that, you know, look, we have been so unfair to you young people. We are bailing out, right? Mm -hmm. We are not going to be part of it. But we know mm -hmm. they will not do that. Mm -hmm. but, it can, but young people can make it clear if we bond very quickly. They will understand. articulated they are the twitter people and i guarantee you that these are people between the age of 21 and 30. they are the people who are shouting and articulated you can see their age on facebook mm. their birthday are popping up every day you're saying to yourself how could you be this mean to yourself so some of them are people who have asked me where i got my experience from i forgot that when i took the first contest for presidency, he was 42 years old in 1993. Ask yourself, in which state had Abtiku been a governor at that time? In which local government had he been a councillor or chairman? Or in which house of assembly had he been? Or in which senate had he been? In 1992, when Atiku contested to be president of Nigeria, he was in his early 40s. Mm -hmm. Right? Today, he's, uh, that's, uh, 1992 is a uh, plus 30 years. That's why he's 70. Most of them. I would have gone through all the gamut because I've been doing this for uh, 30 years. And next year, it would have been 30 years consistently for, for, for fighting for what is good. How about yourself? yourself? Right? Who has done this since forever? I remember your song, 1990, which is how I came to know It was a song about Babangida shifting the goalposts for the transition program, mm -hmm. right? They still haven't changed shifting. This ...political development. Because the same people who are not June 12th, imagine if they didn't know I would have been involved in governance. Perhaps is that but now you can't be say that. Have experience, but I have experience. I'm not. I'm doing this for those who don't. I have experience. My experience is just different. I've, I've not had paid experience or corruption experience. Or <laughs> uh, 
I would do it too. Just give my own side of the assignment. And you said this is your own side of the assignment. I don't want to disclose it in, in public. Go and do this. And except you came back and told me that I failed, which you haven't, I did my own religiously until the last day. And, uh, and my job was to ensure that the whole world was aware of what we were doing. Aware of about, you know, uh, information to the public. So if we had a shadow cabinet at that time, you know which role I was playing. And I don't think for one day, if I failed, nobody notified me that I failed in ensuring. And that was how we were able to save the situation. It was a, a was the reason why they have inflation. No, price inflation in food items. Yes. Things, things put in like food Agri items. Agriculture. For example, is when I say security, I also wanted to make a mention of agriculture. These days, to grow tomato takes less than four months. The other time we had tomato scarcity. Do you know why? Because it took Buhari six months to appoint ministers. If the minister had been appointed, he would have called on the minister the first day there was tomato scarcity. Mm. That why is it that we are not growing tomatoes? And there are some tomatoes that can actually be done in eight weeks ahead with the improved seedlings of tomatoes. Do you know that eventually, after that tomato crisis, we now have too much, I mean, uh, yeah, too much tomato in the system? Mm. Because everybody went to farm. But we're still doing it the haphazard way, you know. There's a problem, you go and fire a brigade approach. So, how do we sustain the growth of, I mean, growing tomato and growing cassava, growing cashew nuts? You know how much the Chinese people are making from cashew nuts in this town? Or, uh, what's this? Uh, is it sesame? sesame? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Also, mm -hmm. so a huge money that can be made, can be made from it. Or spices that is growing, grown in Kaduna. But nobody's, you know, even in their own agricultural policy, they only mention rice. I see rice is the only thing we eat. Before you can even eat rice, you need tomato, you need pepper, you need all kinds of things. Who is growing them? Do we have a policy for consistently growing all of these products, all of these crops? In different places, mm -hmm. are we giving loans to farmers? Do we have post harvest processing plants? You know, is it only done by the Chinese who are making a killing out of it? Are they taking the food that's made for us away so that we are hungry because we don't know what we're doing? Or are we responding only to demand for certain products? So when they say cashew, everybody's going to grow cashew. When they say tomato, you're going to grow cashew. Instead of growing everything, and first and foremost, feeding the Nigerian mouth. Is every farmer in the country who should be growing 20 hectares of land is able only is only able to grow one hectare because you don't have tractors. Why? Because instead of a governor buying tractor, he's buying SUVs, 50 of it. Instead of buying 50 tractors, they buy 50 SUVs. And you see them on the highway every day. And an average governor has 200 cars. Over 200 policemen have to follow one governor to move from point A to B. Whereas you know, they have the chance to grow, 
the economy, they have a chance to invest in education, and then we have a chance to pay workers what they deserve so that they can have purchasing power. Because what purchasing power does to you is that it doesn't cause inflation. It says that when I can buy two of these shoes from you, the man who is making the shoe for you will be forced to go and hire more people to be making the shoes because there's demand for it. And the worker is the one who's able to pay for it because he can afford to pay for it. The same worker will be able to go on vacation and he will put money in the hands of people who are processing the tourism industry. The same worker will be able to pay for their child education and it will mean that the schools are also forced to hire better teachers, even if it's in the private schools. So the economy will be working. What they do in other countries, including America where they're living for 19 years, is that whenever they have an economic crisis, they invest in their people. Mm. They pay them more wages, they introduce more projects. There was a time in the U.S. that a senator proposed a bridge to nowhere in Alaska because he wanted to put money in the hands of the people. He didn't, he just said, build this bridge. <laughs> he didn't say, the, the final destination of the bridge, it's, it's, they study them in school today, mm. you know, because they want to put more money in the pockets of their people. They are not claiming, you can never find America tell you that they have, they have foreign reserve. Now, one of the things that is, um, that is very frightening yes. is the economy. Yes. We don't know how damaged it is. Yes. Now. We don't know how our future... Okay. Yeah. We don't know the kind of debt. I don't think Nigerians are aware of the kind of debt we are in yeah. now. And um, some people say that they, they, they just can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. End of the tunnel. My first response was that if you find yourself in a tunnel, don't hand yourself a shovel. Right? And who is the shovel? Atiku. Who is the shovel? Buhari. So if you can't see the end of a tunnel in the next four years, and all you can do is to go and bring more shovel and digger, you are digging yourself deeper into that situation. And if you ever see a light at the end of a tunnel, it might be an oncoming trade. That's what they are selling to us now. They are selling the light to the end of it, but it's an upcoming train that will crush everybody. So what because we have a wrong direction in terms of political economy. Our political economy is geared towards outsiders. Our economy is designed in such a way that it is easier for a European to come and make billions out of Nigeria than a Nigerian to make $10,000. Mm. Yes, that's our political economy. That is why all of the concept of our economy is about what the World Bank said and what they didn't say, what the IMF said and what they didn't say. People are interested in privatizing our water, right? That is our political economy because we have geared our economy to be this centrally privatized economy. People make, are making us believe that except we privatize everything, we can never source it, which is a lie. When you privatize your economy, you give it to people who have the ability to buy what were public uh, institutions. And when they buy it, they buy it for peanuts. We even give them tax waivers to do it. And when they make profit, they take the profit out of the country. When they want to hire workers, they bring to the country skilled workers, whereas they refuse to get our workers skilled. That is why you find candidates saying that they will build skill acquisition centers. What is the meaning of skill acquisition centers? China is not building schools as we just said that they are building universities, no matter how many they are. Because they know within a university framework and environment, you can gather all the skills you need to make it in life. Right? So our economy has to be an economy that is geared towards the Nigerian person, how to empower the Nigerian person, how to use the, the, the power of the Nigerian, how to pay the Nigerian person what they deserve, how to feed the Nigerian person, how to develop the Nigerian nation. Our economy right now is not, it's, 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 an, it's, 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 it's an economy that is customized and given to us by outsiders. And the outsiders are the biggest beneficiary of, like, for 56 years, 
if you know what the Nigerian economy has done to the outside world in terms of helping them to build their economies, there are cities, cities, I mean cities, who have rose, risen from nowhere to become places that all of us are envious of from the Nigerian economy. Dubai is one of them. You know, even the UK, if, you, if they remove the houses and investment made by Nigerian uh, politicians and business people, the, US, the UK will become almost an empty place. Their shops will not be selling the way they sell anymore because they won't find those crazy people who come around and shut down a shop and buy everything they have and they have to go and restock before they can reopen their shops. So we have to create an economy that is about us. That is what the Cubans did. And that's why they are I, I, proud I want, I want to take you up on one of the... Uh, Economics has medicinal values, it cures seizures, 
epilepsy, as we call it here. It helps with depression. Very good for arthritis. It's, it's good for arthritis. It's good for curing. It kills some part of pain that arises from uh, cancer treatment. It helps with people that have severe nausea. So it's, it's We know to almost kill everything, but we have been criminalizing because of the conditional conditioning of our minds. And I said, if we don't get in the game early, they will end up saying that our cannabis is, is not consumable. And what we can do is we get in the game already, we are looking at $4 billion right there, starting point. $4 billion, $4 billion is a $1 billion is $350 billion naira. So imagine that between Edo State, own those states, Delta State, they say Kuala's uh, cannabis is the best from uh, uh, in the Delta, and the Kitty State, four billion naira. If those three, four states can be making four billion naira in a year, what, what are we wasting our time for? Still killing people in Niger Delta over oil, right? And I know it's a matter of time, cannabis will become the next oil. It's just a matter of time because you look at number of places where it will be legalized and the demand for it. Canada is already unable to satisfy 70% of its demand. Between last week when they were approaching the announcement and now, yesterday when it, so there is 70% gap of requirement of request for for weed cannabis in Canada already. The market is already open for us. But as I'm speaking with you, probably NDLA people are still pursuing some people in the kitty. They will know this line. So, so that was, it's, it's just clairvoyance. It's so, and guess what? The person who won the Canadian election as Prime Minister, Trudeau, Justin Trudeau, made it as a campaign promise and he fulfilled it. And the place is a better place for him today. Yeah. And I'm not asking people to smoke here. I'm saying we prepare for exports. But I understand completely that the reason why I'm not wasting my time asking whether we should legalize it for smoking or not, people are already smoking cannabis in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. In fact, if we legalize it, less people will smoke it. Because Nigerians, there's something about Nigerians. Something you say something is illegal, they will do it. When you say it's illegal, they leave it. I think it's like that all over the world. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what are you most afraid of concerning the youth? concerning this movement that has been activated, people becoming aware of their situation, their environment, to know that we, still, we cannot forever continue on this path. Just like I said in the beginning, sometimes I get a little frustrated, yeah. sometimes I get a little conf confused yeah. about what next to do. Yeah. So what is what is that one thing that really really disturbs you about the people you are preaching to, which of course is my constituency, the young yeah. people. I I'll tell you that uh, the biggest of it is the fact that uh, it's forgetfulness. Right? Uh, I don't know who said it, it says the elites who are ruling, who rule in every society, not in Nigeria, they learn nothing, but they forget nothing. For the youth, they are learning a lot, but they are forgetting everything. And that's scary. It's, it's how much memory uh, young people have, it's very, it's disturbingly low, such that if you want to ask people what happened with Rizuma and Rizai last year, most of them don't remember anymore. And uh, so there is no, there's no historical memory that could guide us through this journey that we are. And the people we are up against understand that. They understand that we are very efficient. You know? Is it that understanding that made them to pay no attention to education? Yeah. To History from our country. No, it is. It's deliberate. Everything they are doing today is deliberate. The weaponization of hunger is deliberate. They know that if they don't weaponize hunger, it will be very difficult to come and give somebody 5,000 naira 
during the election. I hope that the person will vote for them. It is the reason why you see people in diaspora are a little bit ahead of others because they don't have to deal with hunger mm. uh, in a raw form. Their hunger is for ambition, is for education, is for other things. But our hunger is still for food here. So, and it's the reason why you see that probably. never allowed diaspora voting because if diasporas could vote they will help teach this election in the right direction
vote, what can they do? People in the diaspora. That they can call people at home. They can completely fund this this revolution. Uh, we've been asking them to support us. What we need is what we're asking for is two million dollars to
AC oh. action. Mm. Uh, so what we want to do next is do fundraising. Fundraising. Yeah. Fundraising is uh, such that we get enough money mm. to fight the articulated thieves in this country. Yeah. Uh, so as of today, uh, we have two million naira, one seventy seven thousand, one forty eight naira, forty four cover mm. in our account. At the point we got to three million, but to be spending money of course. Mm. Uh, that's why we are where we are now, and we get a lot of donations. So people have also complained that, oh, you know, they have donor fatigue and things like that. So we don't want to put any money under pressure. We, we also have to raise money transparently. Mm. Interestingly, I don't have all those exciting people around from America who know how to raise funds. So they get the lady from the UK, with you. Those guys know how to then raise funds. I know. <laughs> and say, now is not here. Where she, is she? She's, uh, she's in Lagos. Oh. Then wherever it might be, if we don't make enough money tonight, we'll know that it's because girls are not involved. <laughs> <laughs> but I see two of them here. Maybe we'll, we'll bring maybe them to bring the, the couch. Couch. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Um, so, um, account number is uh, 100. This is any bank account. 100. 602-3871. Uh, 100-602. Mm. Father went in to bring some money. Mm. And if he wants I to it. To us. <laughs> yes. So, uh, so we just will be talking as we do that. Then we read comments. Do you have any questions? Uh, Not yet. Not yet. Mm. People were so excited with Father's. What? How? How? They, how do we do? They did well. You know, we got to five hundred people. How many people are we now? Uh, two hundred and twenty-two because we switched. You mm. see, the moment Father left, everybody ran away. All right, so, but, uh, so they said there's a video that is circulating that there will be a diaspora election on 1st of November to chase about the young aspirant who the group will be supporting forward. Perhaps you are aware of this. Just want to bring it to your notice. I've seen it too. Uh, I don't know the framework, so I can't speak to it. I was never contacted by any diaspora group that they are voting for. Someone, but hey, everybody's got a right to do what they want. All right. Uh, so you say you teach post-colonial African history. It would be nice to have a collection of your lectures available on YouTube. It's also a good way to show people uh, your capacity as a prof. Well, I, it's true. I've taught it for eight years, but I don't record my lectures. The university where it is the School of Visual Arts in New York. Uh, it was in possession of everything, but I, I don't, I don't, I don't, they don't video record, we don't video record our lectures. So, I'm just looking at. Uh, yeah, this one says, Good evening, Mr. President. I'm Atim Justin. How was your trip to Abuja? I hope everything went successful. It's long we've had a late night couch show. This has been happiness to a lot of us. Please try to make it work again.
Say, man, that's, I've never had respect for us while they were still in our common way, which led to the death of our beloved brothers, sisters, fathers, mothers, children, and unemployment, insecurity, bad roads, no electricity, no good health care, poverty, and so on. Thank you, Coach. Uh, I'm not arrogant, I just speak my mind as I say things. Uh, elders are people who are called elders because they have done what elders should do. Meanwhile, for the young ones, yes. yeah. If you are done otherwise, you are not even watched to be referred to as an elder. <laughs> if you have stolen food meant for the, the children, children. Yes. if you have destroyed <clears throat> education meant for the future of a young person, you are not worthy to be described as an elder. So, elders, um, eldership is earned. Yes. It is not conferred on people by age. I agree with you. So, uh, if you are referring to the old people who have destroyed the country, well, you know, I have no apologies. Because they've done a lot of wicked things towards me Correct. and towards most of you. Uh, good evening, Mr. President. I was watching you live on Facebook, but Mr. President, YouTube will be better because Facebook is very easy to hack and bad neck or chatting from Europe. I know we should consider. Uh, YouTube as well. We can stream concurrently in all the platforms. Okay. So, technical group, uh, think about how we come back using the... Uh, we promise we'll end this in 30 minutes because we have to we have to go back. Abuja is not a place you start walking around at night. <laughs> all the big thieves are here. Are here. <laughs> Has a list of AC candidates been submitted to INEC? Don't mention my name. Yes, it will be submitted by tomorrow for the National Assembly and the Presidency. The Presidency, yeah. And uh, on November 2nd for governorship and the uh, House, State House of Assemblies. Correct. Keep the questions coming. Do we have questions from uh, Facebook? No, just comment. Uh, if you're making a donation, let us know. So here's a great job, sir. Thank you. And again, if you're sending us messages, Kindly, kindly, always send your name so that we can save it for the future. Take it back, so what time for you can please show us should extend campaign to Badagri, please. We were in Badagri not too yes, long ago, yes. but we'll go back there. Thank you for inviting us. Uh, evangelist, uh, it's an evangelist, evangelist, the star more Lara, gifted child. Thank you, evangelist. In the last interview with Daddy Fris on Cool FM. Willis confirmed that her party was owing 80 million naira. I started wondering who is sponsoring the party. Because the Godfather has one of these new parties. You can see how AAC will be raising funds, uh, money to go fund me, and other sources through public donations and selling memorabilia. AAC account is accessible on their website while none of these new parties are transparent. I think this is one of the areas where Nigerians need to look closely before they decide on which party to embrace. We all know the APC and PDP are two sides of the same bad coin. They rely on stolen public monies to finance their parties. Uh, <clears throat> most of the 91 political parties are a decoy to confuse voters. PDP and APC have more than 70 decoy parties uh, that they registered. Interesting. Thank you, Edward, from London. Go back here. Uh, yes, so we have uh, a we have a donation that uh, came to us that was to announce tonight. It came to us through a bank. Some bank workers pulled together the resources. Wow. And gave us ten thousand dollars. Wow! Yeah. Wow! AAC, come on! Come on! <clears throat> These are bank workers. They don't want to be named. They don't want the bank to be named. Nigerian bank. Yes. They, Fantastic. They are worried that if they name them, you multiply three fifty-five by ten thousand. What do you get? That's uh, three million five hundred and fifty. You need to give them a hand. Come on! Yes. Come on! Thank you very much. We have brought our crowd here tonight to the Clappers Club. Mm. <laughs> but father said, you know, they won't allow them because of his dogs. They sleep so. 
Uh, so, so we have by today. Yes. Another three. Three million. Yes. Yeah. So, if you are in a bank, in a company, anywhere you are looking for ways to donate, so you can. This is a new strategy. You strategy, want yes. together. Contribute the money together and send to us. That's all we need. This is the biggest, this is the best strategy. I'm telling you, yeah. <coughs> One day, history will be kind to all of us. Yes. History will be kind to, to you for doing this for us. So, $10,000 is what we're going to We're grateful. Bank, yeah. If you guys are watching, we're grateful. Yes. Thank you very, very much. much for this. Thank you, yes. So, that will take care of. for us we will make posters we will make t-shirts correct and uh, we have to disclose this to you mm -hmm. uh, the money has not been put in the bank account yet and as I would, we'll do that correct uh, tomorrow okay we'll, we'll change it into the local currency and put it in the bank account and the money is not here with us it's not here it's mm -hmm. not here, it's not here so if i'm leaving here don't you <laughs> If, if you if you meet us on the road, if anything falls from my body, is my teeth. <laughs> okay. So, okay. So it's a three point three point five million, million naira. Naira, and yeah. naira was made from just That's awesome. bank workers. So Correct. you know how many banks are in Nigeria? So if all of them can do that, ten banks will give us thirty something million. That's it. And then we're flying. We'll be flying. We'll be we'll kick these guys' asses. We will. We will. We will. Yeah. We'll kick their ass, you know. Atiku has been spending money like water, Buhari people spending, but yet they cannot, can't they can't guarantee anyone. Mm -hmm. Nobody is falling for their plans or tricks anymore. We're well, wiser. Know, people are wiser. Mm -hmm. Yes. And with no money, we are like all over the Everywhere. Place. Yes. And you know, the grounds we've covered so far, a lot of people <sighs> would expect that only people with a private jet would have done this. Yes. Mm -hmm. But we've done it with zero account. Yes, zero and yes. Oh, we have no private jets. Maybe this is it's, it's article. It's article. Mm -hmm. It's great. <laughs> yeah, it's just falling everything. Yeah. So we can begin to talk about the um, the fundraiser, the new strategy. Yeah, yeah. Um, so our new strategy is to raise funds publicly like this, mm. and also to appeal to those of you who might be out there. Mm. Uh, to help us support this movement. Yes. The revolution has always been the house of the young. The young always inherits the revolution. Nigerian youth are, re are you ready to take action towards your oppressors? If yes, why not join hands with the African Action Congress to dethrone the oppressors? Samuel Agomi is what he said. Uh, we haven't quite gotten a lot of donations tonight. But at least we got one buck donation. Yes, one buck. That's probably bigger than whatever we can. Mr. President, thank you very much. This message to Mr. Drotoy and Kinsley Mogalo to support our president, Mr. Amoyele Shore, to take back Nigeria. Please, fella and Kinsley, we're not begging you because our president Amoyele Shore, we are begging you because of the positives of, of the positives in people in our country, Nigeria. Please, my brothers and sisters, we don't want APC and PDP again. In our life in Nigeria, Fela and Kisley, you yourself know that Moyele is God sent to Nigeria. Our African <laughs> brothers and sisters, they are watching. The whole world is watching Nigeria. Thanks, Mr. President. Evangelist to Gardeners, Dennis is the one who said this. Word. Thank you, Evangelist. So, thank you, Evangelist. <coughs> uh, someone sent a message here. <laughs> this is not relevant to this. Not Please relevant. try and send relevant. You know, I don't. You're too mature to be sending jokes to my phone now. This is not a joking man. Joking, Mr. President, you are, you are not insulting anyone. One of the problems of people is that they are passive aggressive. They don't know when. They are supposed to talk. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, let's go look at uh, Zeri Bank if we go. Uh, so, 
This is from Koforala Beckley, 1000 Naira, one of our aspects. Choko Sara Uchechi, 1000 Naira. Ibrahim F, 50,000 Naira. Come on! I wear that Kabiru, Balaji, 20,000 Naira. Come on! So, this is uh, Aloida Concept Limited. No, and an Aloida Concept uh, Limited, 160,000 Naira. Come on! This is Edward Kana Yojioma, 10,000 Naira. Come on, thank you. All right, so honestly, I think there was somewhere I read payment to someone. Sorry. <laughs> so the 160,000 Naira was the payment to the company. We'll take that back. Okay. It's not a donation. Sorry about that. So, uh, you say there are no comments, questions on the Facebook Live? No. People are so nice to father. <laughs> if it was me, they would have been bombarding me with questions. Maybe we should put father behind again. <laughs> just, just so they know. The revolution has always been in the hands of the young. Okay, we read that before. That's a cool J. Later in my Twitter and said, Thanks, Mr. President, for all you're doing for us, and I hope you feel better soon. I actually feel better already. I just need for the congestion to, to, to clear up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not easy, you know, there's so much dust in our system here. You know, if you take this mango pepper from Joss and just eat a bit of it, the oh, yeah? raw one, you'll feel better. Why didn't you bring from Kabul? <laughs> <then? laughs> if you eat mango pepper, they will help you to the hospital. <laughs> yes. So, but I, I was going to talk about that stuff we talked about yesterday. Oh, yeah, go ahead. The regional arrangement. Okay. You know, um, around the country, mm. one of the challenges we have around the state are funds, funds to drive this, 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 yes. this revolution. And um, we get complaints from all over. People want to work, they want to reach out to people, print materials, and they're having the challenges of raising funds. Yes. And so the next, um, the plan that I think we should also adopt is use this um, uh, this time, times like these, to raise funds for states and regions. Um, we help them to raise funds yes. and share these funds to them so that they can That's uh, true. further our cause. That's true. You know? well, someone has also, in addition to that, someone asked us to make public our our offices across the country so that they can link up with them directly okay so we might want to go and also drop off drop posters, off posters donations, right. vehicles mm. chairs mm. you know things that they would love to give and i think we should do that as soon as possible Correct. but i agree completely mm. that we should uh, uh Help raise funds for well. different regions yes because there are people who are interested in regional support mm. they want to support their state local government towns right. And yeah, we can share the money with those people. Yes. All right? Yes. Yes. So um, if we have um, these funds coming in, we'll be able to raise funds for, say, the North Central State, uh, raise for the South South, raise for the South East, like that, and share these funds around so they can further the course of this movement. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so if you're watching, um, you donate these funds, we'll be able to give them to um, the regional. Um, bodies to further the course of uh, this this uh, candidate on Moyele Shore. Now, what it means is that anything you give will be able to share it around the state, around that area, so the people yeah. who further this, who are doing this great work, can now print posters and be able to reach out to people in the grassroots. Yeah. Uh, so, anything you give will be able to further this cause. in the different part of the country. Yes, I want to announce that Barista Femi Oladunjo mm. has sent 2,000 posters to an address in Lagos. Thank you so much. Thank Barista. you so much. Thank you. Someone is asking, um, 
is asking who your vice presidential candidate is? I think by tomorrow, uh, we'll find out who the president is. Correct. Yes. Mm. We, have, we have a VP now. I've been told as a doctor, medical doctor. Okay. I don't want to disclose the state yet. No, no need yet. <laughs> $10,000 to them. Fantastic. Thank you. Do you. I think you have a call and it's interrupting the... So, Mr. President, yes. maybe you should speak directly to the people that, and, and, and appeal to them directly for the states. Yes. Uh, I think what we'll do is to do six major broadcasts next week. Okay. That will be, uh, we'll focus on each region, mm -hmm. in particular states. Mm -hmm. For example, we're going to do something for Edo State where people in Edo State can donate to us and all the proceeds, all the percentage of the proceeds will send to Edo State. Because okay. there's a lot of Edo State indigenous in the diaspora who has oh, madly in love with us. Mm. Uh, we can do for the Southwest in general, we can mm. do for the Southeast, mm. we can do for the South South, and send the proceeds. So we can share the proceeds to each of the states. Yes. Uh, we can do for the North, mm. the Northeast. North Central and mm. uh, North West. Okay. So I think we, we can start that next week. Next week. Yes. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, also, we'd like to announce that uh, we're planning to have grassroots campaign done across the country. We want each of the states uh, coordinators to organize grassroots. You want to campaign, I mean, campuses, schools, marketplaces, like they, like we've been doing in Lagos recently yeah. a lot. So that we can take this things to the grassroots. We we're planning currently planning an Abuja stop. Yes, you know, yeah. I wanted to announce that tomorrow in Abuja actually mm. we'll be on the streets of Abuja. Correct. I think about eleven a.m. I've been told to do grassroots campaigns on the outskirts of Abuja. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This is the best way to take this battle to our people. Our people. Yes. Exactly. Um, so somebody has just sent a message. He said, "I truly believe in in youth that their eyes." have been open to all the old fools that have been holding us down for so long. My president, please, you have to put your life on this moment. Your message is clear and very clear for you to take our dear country, Nigeria, back. All we have to tell you is that we, all Nigerian youths, are with you. Please don't give up. Samuel, I go me again. And then, um, you know, Father, it's uh, bad times here. Yes. That's right. It's uh, another <laughs> nine minutes. We are going to borrow nine minutes. Father, nine minutes is okay? It's our house. <laughs> it's our father's house. Yeah. <laughs> nine minutes will be because we came to take father's. Yes. Yes. Special mention of donation of. More than fifty thousand. Ibrahim F is fifty thousand. Abi Fadi Alba oh, sixty thousand. Please give him a hand, please. Remit Remitry Remy is one seventy six thousand. And of course, the anonymous donor, which is ten k. Mm. Yes. Thank you. Mr. President, what can we do to combat the looting and stealing of battle buses during the election? We show sure that others are very good at using boys to disrupt the electoral process. Uh, we sure let's hear you. Let's <laughs> <laughs> hear you loud and clear. Uh, since we said, good morning from here, Mr. President. How can we vote on November 1? The discussion is still revolving around the guy who said people will vote for a candidate on November 1. I don't know the modalities. Uh, I saw it like most of you saw it, and nobody has been in touch with me. If I hear from them, and uh, we'll let you know. Thank you. Okay. So we are at uh, 9.23. Very few minutes to go. I think we have to bring back the girls. For us to get more food, more donations coming in. Yeah. All right. Uh, so.
There's something that came about the national minimum wage, long thing that um, Garba Shell was sharing with people. They're suddenly scared about this minimum wage thing, you know. Sorry, uh, I'm here trying to read some of the things. Okay, so it's 9.24, we'll just, we might as well just close so that Father can go to bed, you yeah. know, we'll keep uh, you waiting. It's, uh, it's your time, take it back, AC, presidential word. So, thank you so much everyone, I think we'll leave now. Thank you. We'll say goodnight, because we still have a long way to go from here. Someone yes. just popped in saying, uh, Yes, good evening. So I just came and said good evening. We want to read those few words. But that was Larry Good who was giving us the chance. <coughs> good evening, sir. This is a matter of fall from Dubai. I hope I never will not use the campaign tomorrow against you, sir. No, we're not campaigning tomorrow. We're doing grassroots engagement. It's a front run campaign. Mm. Uh, Mr. No matter what I stand, by you, even in last month's time, and love you passionately because you have inspired me by your character, your boldness, confidence, and reliability. I choose you as a mentor. God bless, Mr. President. So, say please try and visit Delta. All right, on that note, thank you so much, uh, viewers. We'll be taking a break and we'll thank Father Charlie Boy here again. Father. Totally enjoyed. Give it to me. Totally enjoyed hanging out with you here tonight, yes. and uh, we hope to be back. Mm. Uh, and uh, on inauguration day, you have a special place. You know, you you'll be the first person to sit before anybody. <laughs> you have a chance to choose where you want to sit. Yes. Eat what you want to eat, drink whatever you want.